What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be answering a big question when it comes to docking stations. Is that high priced docking station really worth the extra cash or can you get by or even want to get by with a more budget option? I've got four docking stations lined up here, two display link and two Thunderbolt ranging from $100 to $400 and I'll break down what you get for your money so you can see if spending those extra dollars really makes a difference. So if you're ready to dive in to find out which dock is the best bang for the buck, let's head over by sign up over here and dive in. For those of you who are new to the channel, this pluggable dock was actually the very first doc I reviewed on this channel, also being the very first video I posted on this channel. And the reason I did was because it helped me bypass one of the biggest issues Apple had and still has to this day on their base spec chip. So M1, M2, M3, and that is that you can't run dual monitors. With the M3, they kind of made it a little bit better where if you have the lid closed, you can run dual monitors. But as soon as you open that lid, you have the same issue where you then start mirroring or you just can't do it at all. So getting something like this will let you run those dual displays. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like because I borrowed my wife's M2 Air here. Um, but on top of that, you do get four USB 3.0 in the front, two more on the back, the option to choose HDMI or display port on the back. And you also do get an ethernet port. So it does give you quite a bit, despite being, you know, more of a cheaper plastic design. So let me go ahead and get it plugged in and show you guys exactly what it looks like when it's all set up. And just like that, with the exception of a couple of USBs for like webcam and stuff, we are all set up. So we have display number one, display number two, and display number three. And as you can tell, none of these are mirrored. They are all independent. They are all the same running on the M2 MacBook Air. And what's also really cool about this is you can control your orientation just like you would if this were a Thunderbolt dock or a native MacBook setup where your Mac was natively running these displays on its own. So it's really nice that with the display link software, you do get that. So pretty cool stuff there. And that's really all there is to it with this dock. So overall for $100, it's not that bad of a deal. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when you triple your display link dock budget and get something like this. This here is the BenQ B-Creatus DP1310 Hybrid Dock. I know it's a mouthful, but they both run display link technology, so you might be wondering to yourself, what more could you possibly get for an extra $200? BenQ tried to pack a lot into this dock. You can let me know down below in the comments if you think it's worth it. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what you get with this one. So this device is obviously a little bit different than the first display link dock we looked at. We get an aluminum build, we get a 180 watt power brick, we get USB type C, but none of those are the real reason you would purchase this. The biggest reason you would buy this is this green button right here, and that is the device switching button. And that is because on the back, we do have an HDMI 2.1 input that allows you to pass through to your monitor. So if you have a PC, a console, whatever you might have as your secondary device, you can take full advantage of HDMI 2.1 on that, press this button, it'll go ahead and switch that input. So let's go ahead and get this one plugged in and I'll show you exactly how that works. And just like the last one, we are now connected. We have the USB-C going straight to our Mac, display number one, number two, number three, all independent. We could potentially have another display right here since this one does support up to three. I actually don't own another one, so that's why I don't have it. Same thing with that, we can control everything in our settings, but if you notice right up here, we are getting power. So this one, because it does have that 180 watt brick, which I have sitting right here, we are able to get 96 watts directed straight to whatever laptop we have connected. So pretty nice, we are able to give a little bit of a charge to that so we don't have to have another dedicated plug-in just for charging our connected device. But where the real magic happens now is with this button right here, we can tell my PC is turned on. So all I need to do is press this, the light turns green, letting us know we are now switching to the input on the back. And just like that, we now have my PC pulled up. Just as quickly, we can go right on back, push that button to our laptop. So pretty dang nice, considering that you don't have to go ahead and swap any components on the back. You don't have to change your inputs on the back. You don't need to change it down here. We get a nice switcher that does allow for HDMI 2.1, which is huge for gaming. Now, before I go ahead and move on into our Thunderbolt dock reviews, I just wanted to go ahead and say thanks to those of you who are still watching. I know my channel is a little bit smaller, so if you wouldn't mind giving it a big thumbs up, if you are enjoying this video, if you're finding it useful, it definitely helps the algorithm push my content a little bit more, and it helps me get more stuff like this to review for you guys. But with that being said, let's go ahead and kick off our Thunderbolt docks with the Thunderbolt 4 dock from Wavelink, which costs $200. And it actually does look quite good. I actually really like the kind of silver look on this one. But with that being said, let's go check it out. Before we go ahead and get our budget Thunderbolt dock plugged in, sounds really weird saying budget associating with $200, first of all. Um, I wanted to give you guys a little tour of what's on the outside so you get a better idea of what this can do. And then the biggest differentiator between Thunderbolt and a display link is that these are just flat out more powerful in every single way. You can support 40 gigabits of bandwidth transfer between your host connection, your laptop, and this device here, whereas on display link, it's gonna be limited because it's just a type C port. So it's not gonna be nearly as 
quick. These are just a lot faster in every single way. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want the fastest, most performance possible, you are gonna be looking at a Thunderbolt dock. So with that being said, what do we get on this one? We are getting a headphone mic jack combo, micro SD, regular SD, 10 gig type C that allows power delivery up to 30 watts, a 10 gig type A, one port I wish they had on the back. This is the host connection and it's on the front. So if you are someone that prefers kind of a, a seamless kind of flush front when you're not using or plugging in anything, um, you're gonna have to have one popping out of the front on this one just because that is there. But flipping it over to the back, you may make up for it because this one does give you a 2.5 gig ethernet, which you do not find on docks at this cost. You just don't. Uh, usually you're gonna get one. So seeing 2.5 is pretty impressive. Uh, two more. Type A is at five gigs, one more at 10. You're gonna have your Thunderbolt connection here. So if you do have a Windows machine, this will support up to three external monitors plus your display on your laptop. But if you are using Mac, this will just run two and mirror a third. So something to keep in mind there, two HDMIs and your DC input. So with that being said, let's go ahead and plug it in and show you what it looks like. If you do plug it into a base spec Mac, M1, M2, M3, you won't be able to support dual monitors. That's why I had those display link docks earlier. You can bypass that with that software but if you just want the pure speed that thunderbolt can give you it will work on your macbook you'll get those faster speeds but you will have to be limited to just running on one monitor and that's fine if you have one or maybe you have a, a ultra wide you can do that but i'm going to go ahead and switch to my macbook pro now and show you guys kind of what the full setup would look like all right so we got our macbook plugged in here we have our two monitors these are both 4k monitors by the way running at 60 hertz and this is able to run both of those so long as we have one going through usb type C which is connected to this one and HDMI which is connected to this one however if we were to go ahead and switch them both over to HDMI this is where we get that mirroring issue so this is why I kind of mentioned earlier that if you have a Windows PC that's fine you can run three separate screens but on this specific dock this is what happens now we have our monitors and we can see these ones are mirrored so you can only run two displays if you have a pro or max chip on your mac and now lastly if you have been waiting for the most expensive dock i have here on my table i also think this is one of the most expensive thunderbolt docks you can buy it's also made exclusively for apple silicon this is the ivanki fusion dock max one and the reason i say it's the most powerful dock that is because it has dual thunderbolt 4 chips in inside. So each of these has its own dedicated upstream port to your laptop, allowing you to push up to three 6K displays or a fourth 4K display all at 60 Hertz. So this does have quite a bit of power packed into it. Unfortunately, if you are a Windows user, you can use this, but you can look into a CalDigit TS4. Um, that would be a better option for anyone else that is not on Apple. But let's go ahead and take a peek at what else you get for $400. With this dock here, we are looking at a total of 21 ports, the most of any single dock in this lineup, and also eight more than the other $200 Thunderbolt dock will give you. We're getting six total USB type C, four of which of those are 40 gig downstream ports that can support your monitors or other high bandwidth equipment. And the other two are just 10 gig ports, which we can see up on the front here. We are also gonna get two more type A on the front and three more type A's on the back, all of which are 10 gig ports. So we get quite a few options when it comes to connectivity on this one. On top of that, we're going to get the standard kind of headphone jack, which is a multi uh, mic and uh, audio out. We're going to get another audio out on the back. You're going to get your 2.5 gig on this one as well. And you're also going to see an optical audio interface. So this dock has a ton of options along with also offering a 180 watt brick. But the best thing about this one, like I mentioned earlier, is you get those two Thunderbolt four ports, which we can see right here, we have dual connectivity going upstream to our Mac. So we're gonna have a lot of bandwidth going back and forth. So when you do look at the difference from 100 to 400, it's actually pretty dang significant. You go from no type C, no power brick, to having six USB-C ports, uh, a ton of extras. But I think the biggest difference comes from just going from $100 to $200, where we have this dock compared to this dock. So we're going from plastic to aluminum. We're getting only type A to finally getting type C. We're getting a Thunderbolt. We're getting a 180 watt power brick. So all of those things for $100 is a pretty big difference. At the end of the day, each of these docks can greatly improve your workflow from a standard USB hub since you can connect more monitors, more devices, and achieve a more streamlined setup in both performance and appearance. Which dock you ultimately choose depends on what you need and how much you want to spend. But hopefully now with this video, you have a better idea of what you get for the money. All of these docks will be linked 
linked in the description down below if you wanted to check them out. But if you do happen to have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. I'm happy to answer any one of them. But that's really all I have for you guys. Thanks so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end. And be sure to like and subscribe since it is free and helps me continue growing my small channel to bring you more reviews like this. I appreciate your support and we'll see you on the next one.